What's up, everyone? Welcome to a video on residuals, looking at actual versus predicted values of a linear regression model. In this video, we're going to talk about why residuals are so important when it comes to analyzing the relationship between two quantitative variables. So let's just dive right into it. So here is a scatter plot looking at the number of miles on a Ford F-150 Super Crew truck not being sponsored by them, by the way, for this video, and the price of that truck. And we clearly see a negative, fairly linear, fairly strong relationship. As the miles on a truck increases, its price, its value goes down. And what we did was we created that linear regression model, that model to try to predict the price based on the miles driven. So we got our y-intercept, that's our a value, uh, 30 38,257, we got our slope negative 0.1629. So how does this formula work? You plug in the miles of a truck and you get a predicted price for that truck. So remember what we did there to find that linear regression model was we ran a line of best fit. Sorry, that's not too perfect, but we ran a line of best fit through the data, but we don't really call it a line of best fit anymore. We call it that linear regression model. All right, so, okay, that's, that's great. That's awesome. Where are we going next with this? Well, here's the idea. When we use a linear regression model to make a prediction for response variable y with a given explanatory variable x, we most likely will be off a little bit. I mean, it's called a model. It's not perfect. They're called predictions, meaning they might not actually happen. So, for example, one of the actual Ford F-150 trucks that you just saw in that scatter plot had 75,678 miles on it, and it did have an actual sales price of $28,986. So once again, the, the actual X value was 75,678 miles. The actual Y, the actual price of that truck was $28,986. But if we were to use our model to predict the price for a truck with 75,678 miles on it, we don't get the actual price. We get a predicted price of $25,929.05. So again, here's my work for that, right? I literally took the linear model, the, the line that is used to make predictions. I plugged in the mileage of 75,678 and I got a predicted price. And again, this is why it's so important that we understand that here is the actual price. This was the predicted price. That's why that little hat needs to be on the price or the Y hat there. So needless to say, our prediction with the model was off a little bit. The difference of how much we were off by is called a residual. So the residual is the difference between the actual price of the truck and what our model predicted for that truck. So again, pretty simple. All I did was I took the actual price $28,986, I subtracted my predicted price, and the difference is my residual value. So again, the residual value is just the difference between what actually occurred and what we predicted to occur. So a nice formula for a residual value in generic is just your actual Y minus your predicted Y. So no hat on the first Y, because that is your actual Y, minus your predicted y. Now, order of subtraction matters very much so. So please remember that the actual goes first. The easy way that I remember that is actual begins with A. A is the first letter of the alphabet. So the actual value needs to go first. So every single data plot on a scatter plot has its own residual value because every dot represents an actual item or an actual individual, in our case, an actual truck. And the difference between that actual point and the line that we use to predict it is the residual value. So once again, here is a picture of that scatter plot. And I drew my linear regression model, my line of best fit through it. And we could actually see that um, the residuals are those distances. So again, I'm going to actually use green here. So for example, Right here, this is my residual value, right? It's the difference between the actual blue dot and the prediction from my line. And you'll actually see that some, some predictions were over what actually occurred. Some predictions were under what actually occurred. 
Some predictions were very, very close. This one was very close. Here's another one that was almost a perfect prediction. Um, again, here's another one where the actual was below the prediction. The prediction was an overestimate. Here's one where the prediction was an underestimate. So notice that residuals are vertical distances. It's the vertical distance between any actual point and it's predicted. So every point has a residual value. So once again, remember, it's all about the distance between the Y's. The Y of the actual dot and the Y hat that came from the line. So these vertical distances here. So again, we love residuals. Now I want to prove to you why residuals are so important. Think about it like this. Let's just make a bad line of best fit, a bad re re linear regression model, right? So these are four different scatter plots, all of the, the trucks, right? They're all the same scatter plot. Now imagine somebody thought that this was the line of best fit. Now, obviously, you would not be very intelligent. You would not be understanding at all. No, that doesn't even go through the data. But notice what happens if I thought that that red line was the best line. Well, all of my residuals would be positive. Every single actual value is above what we predicted. Every single one, above, 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 above. And that, that's terrible, right? That's, that's not right. We want, we want our predictions to be not perfect. We, we know they're not going to be perfect. We want them to be close. And then here's another example. Maybe I was really terrible and I thought that that was the line of best fit. Well, in this case, every prediction was over what actually occurred or, or every actual value was below predicted. Again, every single one was below, 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 below. Those would all be negative residuals. Every single actual value was well below predicted. That's a terrible model. Listen, models don't have to be perfect, but they should be <laughs> decent, right? All right, here's another example. Maybe, maybe I thought that this was the best line. Okay, that clearly does not go through the data. And again, look, notice what would happen here. We would have all negative residuals over here. Every one of these would be negative. So we'd have a bunch of negative residuals. Now, I'd have to actually extend the red line all the way up to here to look how big this residual is. That's terrible, right? And then on this side, I'd have... <coughs> excuse me, all positive residuals. So it's like, that's, that's actually like a pattern, right? All negative residuals, then all positive. That's a terrible idea. Or here's one last example. Maybe I thought that that is the line of best fit. Obviously, I'd be, I'd be a moron. But again, notice what happens is that I have all positive residuals. Every point on the left is above the line. Every point on the right is below the line. Again, those are all terrible lines of best fit and the residuals allow me to see why they're so terrible. So let's go back to the actual linear regression model, the, the true line of best fit. Why is this line so much better than all those ones I just drew? Because it goes through the data. And when you go through the data, you actually end up with a nice mix of residuals. Notice that um, as we move throughout the graph, we have positive and negative residuals throughout the graph. They're not all positive, then all negative, or vice versa. And notice that some residuals are, maybe I should erase that yellow, it's kind of uh, makes it hard to see. But again, some residuals are small, like this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. These ones are small, and some residuals are, you know, kind of medium-sized, like, like this one right here. But that's actually a good thing. That's showing that my line is going through the data. A true linear regression model goes through the data, creating a mix of residuals. And let me actually even prove that further here. So here are all of the actual data. This is the actual data of my trucks. So this is the actual coordinates of all of those blue dots. Here are the X values, the miles driven. Here are the actual prices of each individual truck. And here are my residuals. So again, what did I do to get the residuals? Well, I took the actual price Y minus the predicted price from the red line. And notice if we look at all these residuals, some are negative, some are positive. So here's some negatives, 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 negatives. Some are positive, positive, positives, positive, positive, positives. Um, that's a good thing. Some are kind of smaller. For example, 
This residual right here is pretty small. Um, this residual right here is getting off by two thousand dollars. That's not too bad. This one's off by one thousand one hundred dollars. That's not too bad. And some residuals end up kind of being bigger. This residual is off by seven thousand. This one was off by eight thousand. But the point is that this is good. You should see a nice mix of residuals. When your residuals are mixed up, it's only proving that your line is truly going through your data. So you're gonna have positive, you're gonna have negative, you're gonna have small, you're gonna have large, and guess what? If we were to add up all of the residuals, we should get a zero. Because that makes sense. Because again, what's a true line of best fit, a linear regression model trying to do? It's trying to balance all of those residuals. It doesn't want them all to be negative or all to be positive or half and half. It wants them to be nice and mixed up. So if we add up all the residuals, you should get something really close to zero. Be aware, you might not always get exactly zero because we're, we do a little bit of rounding, obviously, but you should be very, very close to zero. In fact, one other thing we could do is we could actually make what's called a residual plot. A residual plot is a plot of your residuals. So instead of plotting your X's and your Y's, we plot the X's and the residual values. So notice that in the center here, we have zero. That's because some residuals are positive, like all of these, and some residuals are negative, like all of these. But again, that's a good thing. That's what we want to show. We want to show that. And the other thing we see in a residual plot is some residuals are fairly small, meaning they are close to predicted. And some residuals are maybe medium, like they're, you know, not super close, but they're not that far away. And some residuals are a little bit bigger. These are all good signs that your linear regression model is good. Think about that again. A line of best fit goes through the data. It doesn't go above it. It doesn't go below it. It doesn't go, it doesn't cut through it with negatives on positives on one side or the other. It's a nice mix. That's what a residual plot should show. That's what your residual should show. So one way that we actually check and make sure that our residuals are, are nice and mixed is by looking at a residual plot. And when you look at a residual plot, you should see nothing. You should not see a pattern, right? So a residual plot should show nothing. And when a residual plot shows no pattern, that's meaning that the residuals are mixed up. And if you've been listening to me throughout this video, that's a good thing. So when we want to make that decision of is a linear model appropriate? Is a linear model appropriate? Well, first off, we've mentioned this in previous videos, the scatter plot has to look somewhat linear. Like you need to look at your scatter plot of X versus Y and say, yeah, I guess I kind of see a line forming. That's first and foremost. Like why would you use a line if your data has a curve in it? But now we add a second piece to that in that the residual plot should be truly random with no pattern. If your residual plot is random with no pattern, it's just going to show that you have a nice mix of residuals, which is a good thing. Now, let's make sure you understand what it would look like if our residual plot did have a pattern. Okay, bear with me here. Clearly, this data has a curve in it. So I would be a fool if I thought a linear regression model was an appropriate model for this data. But let's me just pretend to be a fool for a second. So if I tried to run a line through this data, it might look something like that. But why would this actually create a pattern? Let me explain. Notice what's happening here when I try to put this line through curved data is there's a pattern of what the residuals are doing. The, the residuals actually have a behavior. They're all positive. Then they switch to all negative, starting off with some smaller negatives, then moving to bigger negatives, then back to smaller negatives. And then we come back to positive residuals. So in a residual plot, that would look like this. Positive residuals in the beginning, negative residuals, small, then big, then back to small, and then positive residuals starting small and then getting bigger, because that's what happened, right? So that, that's a pattern. The residual plot would actually show a curved pattern to it. And if there's a curve pattern in your residual plot, it means there was probably a curve in your scatter plot, so you shouldn't even be using a linear model in the first place. Again, I want to emphasize what's happening here. All positive residuals, then small negatives, 
followed by bigger negatives back to smaller negatives. Then we have positive small and then leading, ending with some bigger positives. That's a sign that there's a curve in your data. And if there's a curve in your data, your residuals are going to actually show that in a residual plot. We do not want a residual plot to have a curve into it. If there is a curve in your residual plot, that means your original scatter plot was nonlinear. So again, if we have a data, a scatter plot that looks linear like this one, and we want to make truly the best line that goes through the data, notice there's no pattern to the residuals. We have neg uh, positives, both big and small. We have negatives, both big and small, and it's mixed throughout the data. Throughout the data, we see positives, we see some negatives, and some positives, some negatives, and some positives, some negatives, and some positives. That's good. That's what we want. That means that a linear model is appropriate. So A, the scatter plot looks somewhat linear. That's awesome. But B, the residuals would be a true nice mix. And that's a good thing. So actually here is, again, this is a, an example of a residual plot that shows a curve. Like, do you see, do you clearly see the curve in this residual plot? All positives, then a switch to a lot of negatives and another switch to positives. That would show you that the original scatter plot probably had a curve in it. We want a residual plot that would look something like this. Like, okay, in the beginning, positives and negatives. In the middle, positives and negatives. At the end, positives and negatives. That's a residual plot that shows nothing. That's a great thing. All right, so hopefully you understand A, what residuals are. It's simply that vertical distance between the actual value for the Y and the predicted value from my line. And why residuals are so important in helping us understand that what we are looking at is a good linear model. All right, that's it for this video. See you later.